The Spider Web. There's so much life in the garden. That's why I come. Life that is gentle, self supporting, and beautiful. Continuous in its cycles, grounded, pure. On this morning, I had come into the garden to escape. The previous night was one of unprecedented upheaval in my marriage, a conflict out of nowhere, or so it seemed. Though in retrospect, of course, that's never true. Nevertheless, from my perspective last night, everything appeared to be fine, and then suddenly I was facing a full on verbal confrontation for which I was totally unprepared. Sitting safely in the cover of the very early morning mist, I was still in shock. What had just happened? What was going to happen now? I looked out into the gray lit garden. For a moment, across the path, I saw a sparkling spider web revealed by tiny droplets of moisture deposited by the mist, which was quietly moving on. It was there all along, but from where I was sitting, it had been hidden from me. I had not moved, but as everything around me changed minutely with the shifting of the mist, it was revealed to me. A moment later, It was gone again, the soft, moist suggestion of secret lines having quickly dried in the light and the breeze. But I glimpsed it and felt drawn to it, connected by five anchors, breath-like in their fragility. The spider stretches her home boldly across a path from which it could easily be torn. She's quick with her work, as if she knows that forces beyond her control could change her life forever or end it. Still, with a determination born of instinct, she carefully places the roots of her web and begins to weave her home. The orb weaver's web is made up of outward stretching lines emanating from a center point around which concentric circles are spun. These coaxial threads are made of a sticky filament to trap the spider's prey. The straight lines are smooth, providing a foundation which allows the spider to move up and down her web without getting bound in it. Parents, spouses, children, jobs, and friends, these anchors provide the foundation around which we spin our ever tighter lives, the safe lines, the ones we can freely move up and down. They are safe, but fragile, very fragile. Inevitably, whether from pressure or aggression, One or more of the spider's safe lines could break, leaving the remaining anchors to hold more weight than was entrusted to them. Unmoored now and unstable, the web sags, threatening the future of the spider. If she can re-anchor it in time, her security is ensured for a while, but if more than one anchor is lost, the task ahead will be daunting. I'm not sure how many of my safe lines snapped last night, but I feel a great urgency to try and reattach what I can, to try and preserve some semblance of safety for my home and family. I tried to walk up to the spider web, searching for a clearer view, but found as I approached, I couldn't see it at all. It seemed to disappear into the shadows. I glanced around to see if I was obscuring my own light through the shifting morning mist, sometimes, When I looked at the sun rays, I saw lines of light. Sometimes, there were lines of shadow. The mist tumbled through light, through shadow, and then it was gone. Standing just above the spot where I was sure her web had been, I was puzzled that I could not find it at all from this close position. Clarity came from a distance. I stepped back and it appeared. I stepped forward and it vanished. As I changed my perspective, the web appeared, then disappeared, then appeared again. Somehow, knowing it was there didn't help me find it at all. I had to move away to regain the perspective I had lost. I needed to step back to understand what had happened last night. I needed to gain perspective. As I tried to center on this, my thoughts fell back to a few minutes before when I had wondered if I was obscuring my own light. 
In that moment, this question of simple physics began to spread wider and became abstract. I was obscuring my own light. I had been for years. I had done it thinking I was doing what was best for my family. But in making the choice over and over again to hide my light, I had reduced myself to someone who was fearful and dependent. Someone who had traded independence for security provided by another to whom I had freely, though foolishly, given all my power. In doing what I thought would make me safe, I had, in fact, made myself vulnerable. Deeply, frighteningly vulnerable. Vulnerable.